Imagine a world where you never have to worry about updating Windows or where you access it from. Microsoft wants you to sign up to stream Windows, but are you ready to pay for Windows as a service? Today, I look at Microsoft's latest subscription plans. Plus, Windows 11 Moment 3 is now available as an optional download, and we get a list of the requirements for using Microsoft 365 Copilot. Hello, I'm Russell Smith, Editorial Director of Petri.com, and this is This Week in IT. So let's start with the story about Windows 365. Now, Windows Central reported this week that they've seen information in a leaked document that came to light as part of the Federal Trade Commission's inquiry into the Xbox acquisition of Activision Blizzard that Microsoft is planning already for a year because this document actually dates from June 2022 even though it's only just surfaced now, that Microsoft is planning to release a consumer version of its Windows 365 service, which already exists for commercial customers. Now, this service you can think of like Windows as a service, essential. So essentially what you do is you stream the operating system or cloud PC, sometimes Microsoft calls it, to a device. Now, this could be a Windows Windows 11 device or some other kind of device. But basically, this allows organizations to roll out a Windows desktop and have Microsoft manage the whole system for you. So you don't have to think about updates. You don't have to think about access. You don't have to think about which device you're going to access it from. It's just always there and always available. Now, Microsoft actually has two services that are very similar. So at the moment, it has Microsoft 365, which is this turnkey solution, so this cloud PC in a box. And really, this is designed for organizations that don't want to get too involved in the management. They just want a solution that works right out of the box. And there's also Azure Virtual Desktop. Now, this is really for larger organizations that want more control over the management and the desktop experience that they're rolling out to their end users. But it is more complicated to deploy. So what's come to light in this document is that Microsoft is planning various different forms of Microsoft 365 for consumers. And I can read the snippet of information that we have in this document to you. So according to the leak, Microsoft is planning to move Windows 11 increasingly to the cloud, build on Windows 365 to enable a full Windows operating system streamed from the cloud to any device. Use the power of the cloud and client to enable improved AI powered services and full roaming of people's digital experience. Now, Microsoft is already expanding the integration of Windows 365 for commercial customers into Windows 11 with features like Windows 365 Boot and Switch. So for instance, Windows 365 Boot will allow you to essentially start a device and jump straight to your cloud PC desktop. So you don't have to lo log into the local version of Windows to access it. You can get straight to your cloud PC. And Windows 365 Switch will essentially integrate that cloud PC desktop into your local Windows taskbar. So you can just switch between the two different experiences between cloud and local, essentially. So what's behind all of this? You know, Microsoft want consumers to subscribe to Windows. It seems like a bit of an odd proposition. You know, when you think about consumer subscriptions, you might think about Netflix, HBO, you know, YouTube TV, that kind of thing. But Windows? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure that the world is ready for Windows as a service in the consumer space right now. But I think what Microsoft is worried about is the threat from things like Chromebook and lighter weight operating systems that can essentially be deployed quickly and easily anywhere you know, and potentially as a cloud service. Now, there have been rumors about a family subscription for Windows 365. So, for instance, you could deploy desktops to your kids. And if they need help with their homework, you could just then jump into the desktops and, of course, have some control over what's going on on those desktops. And I can kind of see that working maybe in that scenario. And it's interesting to see what's happening with Windows 365 in the commercial space. And I'm not sure that it's seen, you know, the kind of uptake that Microsoft would really have liked. 
I think partly because it's quite an expensive solution. So that's one issue that they have with trying to make some kind of revenue through this subscription model. But of course, you know, just like every other service we have these days, obviously with Microsoft 365 and all the other product productivity apps and things that you subscribe to, Microsoft wants that revenue stream for Windows as well. Whether the world is ready for it right now, I don't know. But there are some headlines out there this week, you know, like from uh, The Verge and places like that, that suggest Microsoft, although they don't say it directly, but kind of suggest that Microsoft wants to do away with the local Windows experience. That is just not going to happen, at least not any time in the foreseeable future. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Windows as a service. Would you pay for a subscription? I'd be really interested to know. Windows 11 Moment 3 is now available as an optional download. Now, this is really confusing what's been going on with this. This rollout of Windows 11 Moment 3 seems a bit like, you know, a, a slow motion car crash or something. Uh, I don't know really kind of why this has taken so long to get out. It seems like Moment 2 came around relatively quickly and you know, relatively seamlessly in some ways, but this has been going on for months now. So in May, Microsoft launched a controlled feature rollout of Moment Free for consumers. So if you are able to, you know, toggle the get the latest Windows updates now in Windows updates, if you're not on a managed device, then you may already have Moment Free on your device. But for managed devices, that toggle is not available. So organizations can now manage the rollout of Moment 3 to devices through Windows Update, just in the way that they would manage the rollout of any other update. Now, this is, as I understand, still in preview. So you would only want to roll this out to a controlled set of users at this stage. And I expect it might come out of preview and be more generally available to organizations in the middle of July. Now, this moment contains updates to things like live captions, so there's support for more languages and voice access. We get the VPN status icon on the taskbar now for VPNs that are downloaded through the Microsoft Store. You can enable seconds in the clock on the system tray, although that's not recommended because it does have a bit of an impact on performance. Two-factor authentication codes are now supported in Toast notifications. And we've got access keys now in File Explorer. And there are a whole load of other things. But I don't really want to talk too much about all of these things in Moment 3 until it's more widely available. I don't have it on my device at the moment, although the changes to the widgets board have appeared, even though the rest of the updates in Moment 3 I still don't have. So really confusing what's going on there with the rollout of all this stuff. But it's kind of coming in dribs and wraps. So you may have it, you might not have it. Your organization can install it on devices if they choose to do so right now, but it hasn't quite reached that broad general availability yet. So of course, there was a lot of talk about Microsoft 365 Copilot earlier this year. And now we finally got a list of the requirements that you're going to have to meet if you want to actually be able to use it. So this is something for organizations. So it shouldn't go as a big surprise that you're going to need an E3, an E5, or a Microsoft 365 business or business premium license to get access to it. You're going to need an Azure AD account and you need to be signed up for the current channel or the monthly enterprise channel for your Microsoft 365 enterprise apps. The IT admins in your organization will also need to enable Teams plugins and unblock WebSockets connections. It's interesting that this is only going to be available in the new Outlook client for Windows. So if you're using the legacy desktop Outlook app, then you won't be able to use Microsoft 365 Copilot as part of that. Now, it's worth noting that this thing is still in a very restricted private preview at the moment. So even if you wanted to, you probably can't download it unless you're lucky enough to be part of that exclusive access preview. You kind of had to apply for it and tell Microsoft why you were so deserving of being part of it. And it wasn't free, by the way. And 
this system now is still obviously in development and Microsoft are basically giving organizations a heads up as to what you're going to need to enable and have in place if you want to use it when it becomes more broadly available. Now, Microsoft is also saying that there's the possibility that it could leak sensitive information. So if that's of a concern for your organization, then there are a couple of things you can do to try and prevent that. You can you know, use something like Microsoft Syntex or Microsoft Purview to control the information and how it's used within the Copilot system. The details of that I'm not really sure of, but it is a little bit concerning that there is that possibility and Microsoft basically saying, well, you need to use these other bolt-on products that also obviously require some kind of licensing in order to make sure that your sensitive information stays within your organization. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now that you might also find interesting. So please do check that out. But that's it from me for this week and I'll see you next time.